Definitely looking forward to that delicious soup, ladies. Thank you so much. Now, running a business during the COVID-19 pandemic can be extremely stressful, and a lot of entrepreneurs were forced to make harsh decisions in order to keep afloat. I'm now joined by brand communication specialist, author, and entrepreneur, Mosa Kalenga, who knows all too well how difficult things have been for small businesses. Welcome to Afternoon Express, Musa. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much for joining us because this is certainly something of high importance to all South Africans. Now, Musa, as a busy man yourself, you are not used to sitting down and just allowing yourself to be locked down. So how has it been like spending time and what have you been up to? Sure, it's been uh, it's been very interesting, and you know, <laughs> unfortunately or maybe fortunately, our, we were on lockdown for about three days before the country officially went on lockdown because someone in our state had an early uh, indications of, uh, of of COVID nineteen, so they actually put us on lockdown for about three days before the official lockdown. So it's been a while. Um, it's been different as well because ultimately, you know, I get to spend a lot of time uh, with with my kids, and in between kind of putting them through Afrikaans, history, science, and maths lessons. Uh, I'm still trying to get through my day uh, with meetings and the rest that must happen. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously all the rest of the domestic support that I'm trying to provide uh, to, to be a good father. So it's been, it's been difficult, but I think it's also been a blessing in disguise because you get to spend time, um, you know, an inordinate amount of time with the family, which for me has been, you know, has been completely really, really uh, insightful. Uh, it's also helped me to look at uh, a lot of things which I took for granted, you know, effectively around what happens in the home when I'm not there um, <laughs> and how my, uh, my family cope without me when I'm, you know, running around gallivanting. So um, it's been fantastic. I think it's really been good for me. Yes, Musa, it is true. Things don't magically just happen at home. There are a lot of people <laughs> putting in time, effort and love to making a home exactly what it is, a home. Yeah, but moving absolutely. from the household, yes, from the household to business. I mean, you were extremely enthusiastic about technology and how to empower small to medium businesses. So what is it about the digital world that fascinates you so much? So I think, you know, I've been saying for a while that the future of, of Africa as a continent is about three things. It's about uh, creativity, empathy, and technology. Um, and companies and organizations that understand how to use those three things interchangeably will be the ones that win in the future. And we've got a big challenge on our continent in that we've got a huge market, which we refer to as the digitally invisible. And they're typically underserviced and don't necessarily have um, the right commercial means to get access to a lot of very expensive technology solutions. Um, so we find that this market in particular has got amazing, amazing challenges that we need to solve. And we need to do so uh, from a technology perspective to empower them and to make their lives better. And so when we consider where we at as a business, this has become front and center in as far as the products that we build and how we try and solve for them. Because ultimately, um, we believe through the power of technology, uh, Africa can actually um, leapfrog. I think in our generation, they always refer to you know, us being able to look at the fourth industrial revolution as an opportunity. And I think technology absolutely creates that gateway for us. Yeah. And speaking about that fourth industrial revolution and us seeing a huge change in society and how people do business. I mean, as a CEO and entrepreneur yourself, how have you responded to COVID-19? I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes in your own business. Yes. I mean, it's been phenomenal. And I think, you know, it's a funny thing. I always tell people it's like it's the biggest pilot project that nobody signed up for. Right. <laughs> Um, and so it's Absolutely. been a blessing to a lot of companies because it's forced us to now think about how we work in a completely different context. Something as simple um, as working from home, which for a long time major corporates were fighting against because they were like, no, you can't trust South Africans, you can't trust people at home, they're not going to work, yada, yada. And now all of a sudden we're in the situation where people are productive, they're at home and they're doing their thing, right? So it's completely changed it. I think what we have to appreciate is that it's not going to go back to being normal. Um, we've been in this space now where people have been able to figure out that there isn't necessarily a direct correlation between sitting behind my desk and being pro productive. And because we've debunked that myth, we have to find technology and processes that help us to support this new reality. Um, we have to find ways that we understand that people are going to be working from home and working from anywhere. A lot of people that are in the freelance economy or the gig economy will know exactly how that works. You don't have to be anywhere to add the value you need to add. So I think it's forced South Africa to think differently about how we look at the world of work and the world of value creation because it is never going to be the same again. Absolutely. But it's a bit 
difficult because a lot of people, especially who are not used to digitizing your space, this is completely yeah. new territory and they, it might seem a little overwhelming to try be the best and optimize in the space. And you decided then to take matters into your own helps, hands and help us by holding a virtual masterclass. It was called Digitize or Die, <laughs> iconic name <laughs> by the way. Now tell me about this initiative and why is it so important for business owners to consider digitizing their in companies? Yeah, look, it's absolutely critical. So I was invited by a gentleman called uh, uh, Pat Maslango. He's got a platform called Pat on Brands and effectively put together this masterclass to help other entrepreneurs and small businesses try and figure out how this all fits together. Mm -hmm. And I've recently put together a, a framework which I call Adapt Nation, which apparently allows small businesses a bit of a toolkit to think about these things within their business and to solve for them. So what this workshop effectively did is that I modeled a few different scenarios where small businesses could assess, um, could pivot their businesses, could stabilize them and could grow them after COVID-19. And one of the core things was helping businesses to understand that they have to think critically about the implementation agility which is how quickly they're able to shift and, and change shape to be able to respond to the crisis. And the second thing is I refer to mental resolve, right? So making peace with the fact that things are no longer going to be the same again. Um, whether you like to believe it or not, there are certain people that are still sitting there hoping and praying that things go back to normal. And I always advise that entrepreneurs should think about things as not going back to normal, but rather figuring out how to create um, in the new context. So understanding how your implementation agility is, which is your ability to move quickly and shift in conjunction to how much you've resolved that the world is completely different mm. allows you as a business to start thinking about digitization and then to take the necessary steps to be able to get your business to be future proof yeah that already you've already touched on my next point which is advice that advice yeah. is valuable completely changing the way we think about business now flipping it on its head and trying something new what other advice do you have for small business owners that want to see their business thriving post lockdown Absolutely. So I always, I mean, I always love uh, reading people's different thoughts and responses on COVID-19 as well as what's changed. And I read a really, really great quote um, that went along the lines of, a curve in the road is only dangerous if you forget to turn, right? And I think the best advice I can give to any small business, any entrepreneur is to think about this as a sharp bend in the road. And the only way you're going to hit the wall or go over the side of the cliff is if you don't turn your business. You don't turn your business model, you don't turn the way you're thinking, you don't adjust the sales. Um, I think this is really important for you to be able to survive. The way you do the turning is number one, be very clear that the world has changed fundamentally and you don't need to fight that or you don't need to think about it as going back to normal. Number two, how is your business fundamentally from a process perspective, um, from a leadership perspective and from a vision perspective gearing itself to be able to navigate. And number three, what technology do you have in place to support your processes, to enable people to work from home, to enable people to be able to be more impactful, to monitor their projects, to measure their outcomes, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if you think about those three things, really I think that's the best way for small businesses to help navigate uh, um, through this crisis at the moment. Thank you so much. Three key pillars that Musa has just given us to help you at home survive post-COVID-19. We truly, truly appreciate this and I hope that it has definitely subsided some anxiety and some fear that a lot of business owners have as entrepreneurs. Thank you, Musa. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Toodles, goodbye. Now after the break, we meet inspiring founder of Global Care Group, Dr. Hugo Templeman, who moved to Limpopo to make a difference for communities in need. See you after the break.